Oh, you get likes on Instagram and it makes you feel good. That's not really how it works. The early stages of hard work and focus are gonna feel like agitation, stress, and confusion because that's the norepinephrine and adrenaline system kicking in. None of us would expect to walk into the gym and do our PR lift or you know, a performer go do something without warming up. The brain also needs to warm up and start to hone in which circuits are gonna be active. And it's, it's unreasonable for us to think, oh, I've got an hour, I'm gonna plop down and write mm. beautifully for an hour, my best work. We need to accept that there's a period of agitation and stress that accompanies the dropping into these highly concentrated states. Now, in terms of the reward that accompanies um, the feeling that we're funneling into that, that groove of, of being productive in, in one regime, like for you writing this book, the dopamine system is really important to understand. So we've talked about norepinephrine kind of gets you going. Acetylcholine is the spotlight of attention. The dopamine system is mother nature's hardwired ancient system in all animals, including humans, to put us on the right path. Now, it's a lot of people talk about dopamine as this thing that you get when you publish the book or when you get the book deal or when something wonderful happens, like your child's born. And that's true, but dopamine's main role is to be released anytime you achieve a milestone or you think you're on the right path. And when the dopamine system is tethered to a particular pattern of focus, remember duration, path, and outcome. So it's like, okay, you sit down, maybe you don't get much text out, but then the next day you get 800 words of really solid text and you feel good. You're like, I'm, I'm into this. What does that dopamine system do? The dopamine system takes the norepinephrine, which is normally rate limiting, like at some point, there's so much norepinephrine that you quit, and we can talk about that. Mm -hmm. It's actually the, the substrate for quitting. Dopamine can push that noradrenaline back down, that adrenaline back down, and give you more room, more space to do duration path and outcome work, highly focused work. Mm -hmm. And I'm making duration path outcome synonymous with highly focused work. Why would this happen? So let's think about an animal. Let's think about a deer that wakes up and is thirsty and it's wandering out looking for water. That animal needs water. It doesn't know that it needs water. It experiences agitation. The same way that a baby feels agitation when it wants food, but it doesn't know it needs food. Mm -hmm. It just feels agitation and cries and a caretaker comes, hopefully. That deer is now foraging for something that it needs. And let's say it smells water, because deer can actually do that, and arrives at a stream and takes a sip of water. There's dopamine release then that puts it on a path to maybe a larger lake or something of that sort, or to be able to go achieve food. So when we are on the right path and we hit a milestone, dopamine is released and it tends to tighten our focus more for that activity. So the dopamine, this is why drugs of abuse and why alcoholism and some you know, process addictions, which are behavioral addictions are so dangerous because they, a lot of those drugs of abuse are dopamine. So it becomes this yeah. cyclical loop where there's no other behavior that can evoke the same level of release. Right. In fact, I, I sort of define addiction as a progressive narrowing of the things that bring you pleasure. And I say that because it really is the way that the dopamine system works. Normally the dopamine system is designed to be generic. It's designed to get me to do lots of things, social quality, social interactions, you know, work, exercise, all those things just like the stress system is designed to get me out of bed in the morning. A cortisol pulse is what gets me out of bed in the morning. It's also what leads me to, or led me to pursue a career in science out of fear initially yeah. and eventually pleasure. So the dopamine system is tethered to those states of focus. And it's what mother nature designed so that the neural plasticity would occur and you would want to continue those behaviors again in the future. That deer needs to know and remember and create a memory, not just of where that stream is, but the process of, oh, when I feel that agitation, uh -huh. I'm gonna get up and go down this particular path. Right. And so people think of the dopamine system as this kind of like catch all for reward. Oh, you get likes on Instagram and it makes you feel good. That's not really how it works. And the important thing to understand is when you start getting a convergence of norepinephrine, so that level of agitation, duration path outcome, acetylcholine and dopamine, now you're starting to wire in the behaviors that make people really good at certain things. Now in a functional um, view of this, so not addiction, what this means is that for any of us, success in any endeavor is very closely related to how much focus we can bring to that endeavor. 
And the reward system you start to realize is entirely internal. No one's coming along and cramming dopamine in your ear or dripping it in your brain. It's all internal. And this starts to bring us into the kind of like discussion around mindsets. Because so my colleague, Carol Dweck, who you know popularized this right, theme, growth, growth mindset, mindset. it's an, again, a very misunderstood concept. It's the idea that we can change. So that's built into that. But the discovery of growth mindset was of these kids that actually really enjoyed doing problem sets that they knew they couldn't get right. But for them, they would get this like dopamine release from just focusing on the problem. They liked doing puzzles they couldn't get right. It sounds crazy, but inevitably those kids are very good at puzzles and very good at math and these kinds of things. So growth mindset is, I believe, if it was sort of a neuro neuroscience lens on growth mindset would be that the agitation and stress that you feel at the beginning of something and when you're trying to lean into it and you can't focus is just a recognized gate. You have to pass that through that gate to get to the focus component. And then if you can reward the effort process, you really start to feel joy and low levels of, of excitement in the effort process. That's that buffering of adrenaline. That's that feeling like, yes, I've got a lot of adrenaline in my system, but I'm on the right path. Mm. It feels good to walk up this hill, so mm -hmm. to speak. And when you start to bring that, those neural circuits together, you really start to create a whole set of circuits that are designed to be exported to any behavior you want. So if it's writing a book, great. If it's podcasting, great. If it's building a business, great. If it's, if it's you know, building a terrific relationship, great. Then the circuits that Mother Nature has designed are incredibly generic so that we could adapt to whatever it is that we need to do. And I think the misunderstanding around how these circuits work has led to this idea that there's some secret entry point maybe marked flow on the door. Mm -hmm. And there's a trampoline up to that door and you just mm -hmm. open that door and you're gonna be in it. <laughs> right. And yeah, yeah, nothing yeah. could be further from the truth. And anyone who's done well in any career or athletic pursuit knows this, but unfortunately there's a kind of obsession with the idea that it's all supposed to feel good. And it right. does feel good, but there's a whole staircase in which it feels kind of lousy.